Welcome back guys to the course on introduction to information security and we are covering a chapter called privacy and uh, in our previous lecture we were discussing about the hash algorithms um, then we discussed about uh, different uh, uh, ways to verify the integrity of the digest etc today we'll be talking about the symmetric cryptographic uh, algorithms uh, symmetric cryptographic algorithms uses a single key to encrypt and decrypt uh, uh, the message whatever we have encrypted it is designed to encrypt and decrypt the ciphertext unlike the hashing and is also called a private key uh, cryptography since it's using a private key in order to encrypt or decrypt identical keys are used for encryption and decryption so uh, the point was that maybe if uh, a single key is used for encryption and decryption uh, there are high chances that if key is leaked out uh, your data would be vulnerable and anyone would be able to decrypt the data now if we'll try to understand it from this picture uh, a plain text uh, message is being uh, sent uh, using the, uh, the symmetric algorithm and there is a unique identical key uh, it would convert the text, it would be transmitted uh, over to the uh, medium on the network or on the internet and then the same key, identical key would be used to decrypt the data. So the difference between the asymmetric and symmetric is that in symmetric there is only one key to encrypt and decrypt, in asymmetric there is a concept of a private key and a public key. Uh, so as far as the symmetric key is concerned, uh, just keep in mind that there is only one key which is used to unlock the document or to encrypt it or uh, decrypt it. Now asymmetric uh, cryptographic algorithm also known as a public key cryptography uses two keys instead of one. One key is public which is to be shared with the public and there is no harm in that and one key is known as a private key which is uh, to be kept uh, with the person who is using it. Um, uh, keys are mathematically related like uh, public key is known to be everyone and can be freely distributed without any danger. Private key is known to be um, kept private with the individual uh, to whom it belongs to. Uh, for example, if Bob is trying to send a document um, he'll use his private key and would use a public key of Alice and then he would encrypt the document and would send it to Alice. Once Alice will receive it, uh, she'll use her private key and public key of Bob in order to uh, view the document. Uh, so that's, uh, that's how it's used because you are using your public key which is known to everyone and you'll use your private key in order to decrypt it so uh, the message is clear and uh, we can uh, comfortably share it on the internet without having um, any problem uh, with the uh, sharing of the keys now there are some very important uh, uh, key, uh, key information which needed to be shared over here important principles which are there regarding the asymmetric cryptographies are that there are key pairs Unlike symmetric cryptography that uses only one key, a symmetric cryptography requires a pair of keys which is a public key and a private key. Now a public key, as mentioned over here, public keys by their nature are designed to be public so you can share it with everyone and do not need to be protected since they are meant to be shared with the people. They can be freely given to anyone or even posted on the internet, transferred through the social media or anything. There are no issues. Private key should be kept confidential and shall never be shared with anyone because that's your private key uh, which, uh, which should remain with you. Now in both directions, asymmetric cryptography keys can work in both directions. A document encrypted with a public key can be decrypted with a corresponding private key. In the same way, a document encrypted with a private key can be decrypted with a public key. So, asymmetric cryptography uh, can also be used to provide a proof of the sender's identity and that the data has not been intercepted or altered by any means. Uh, suppose that if Alice receives a encrypted document that says that it came from Bob, we know that it came from Bob um, and we can verify that uh, details uh, of it. So that's what we call it a digital signature. 
um, an electronic verification of the sender a digital signature can verify uh, that the sender um, has actually sent the document it can prevent the sender from disowning the message that no it wasn't me who sent the document so since your public and private key is used it is you who actually sent the document proves the integrity of the message as well basis for the digital signature uh, rests on the ability of the asymmetric keys to work on both directions plus the steps to send the digital signed message are illustrated in the next figure which we can see over here as bob is sending he'll use a hash algorithm to verify the integrity of the document we call it a digest and then we'll use the bob's pub uh, private key in order to uh, create a digital certificate for it it would be sent over with a digital signature uh, now bob public key will be used by alice alice will use her private key and would decrypt the message once the message is decrypted it would be further verified by the digest to verify the integrity of the document that it has not been changed so it's a simple principle here they are explaining it in um, this table 6-3 about how the mechanism takes place now, encryption through a software there are different ways uh, the way they are doing it uh, encryption um, is in three ways for example individual files and we have the file systems and whole disk encryption individual file means that uh, one mean of the encrypted through the software is to encrypt or decrypt files one by one however this can be cumbersome process if many files needs to be encrypted uh, one by one um, the second way is the file system that instead of protecting the individual files entire group of the files such as all files in a specified folder can be encrypted by taking advantage of the operating system file system the file system is a method by which the operating system use or store the files on the uh, on the hard drive uh, now the third one is whole disk encryption uh, software encryption also can be performed on a larger scale to entire disk you are going to encrypt the entire disk so that if anyone would get access to it they won't be able to read the data from it this is also known as a whole disk encryption uh, the, it protects all the data on the hard drive in addition to protecting the individual files and folders. Whole disk encryption prevents attackers from accessing the data from the boot sector of the operating system or stealing the hard drive and replacing it uh, with another disk on the computer. So if the data is encrypted on the hard drive, even if you take out the hard drive and would install it in another system, you still won't be able to read the data from that computer. Now, if we are talking about the hardware encryption, uh, it cannot be exploited like the software encryption. Cryptography can be embedded in the hardware to provide a higher degree of security. Uh, encrypted hardware, booted USBs, etc., are the very well known uh, things nowadays. And now we uh, have USBs coming which have the biometric capability as well. So once you connect it to the computer, it would verify your identity by the um, thumb impression or the uh, biometrics and only then you'll be authorized to view the data which is stored on the uh, on the medium resemble the standard usb flash drive with exceptions will not connect to the computer until correct password has been provided all data copied to the drive is automatically encrypted so you don't need to do it individually there is a built-in mechanism on it so as the data is coming it's been encrypted external cases are designed to be uh, tamper resistant and administrators can uh, remote control and track the activity of it so if in case you'll forget the um, uh, key or the encryption algorithm the administrators will be able to help you out in order to decrypt it uh, compromise or stolen drives can be uh, remotely disabled or can be wiped out uh, so that no one can steal the information from there uh, in your book on page number um 200 you can see a picture of the uh, usb with the encrypted uh, uh, encryption mechanism on it having some numbers and stuff like that appearing on it now digital certificates is a technology used to associate a user identity to a public key that has been digitally signed 
by a trusted third party, we call it a certificate authority as well. The third party verifies the owner that the public key belongs to of that owner and then when Bob sends a message to Alice, he does not ask her to uh, retrieve his public key from the central site. Instead, Bob attaches a digital certificate to the message. When Alice receives the message with the digital certificate, she can check the, uh, the signature and trusted third party on the certificate. If the signature was signed by the party that um, uh, she trusts, then Alice can uh, safely assume that the public key is contained in the digital certificate is actually from Bob. So digital certificates made it is possible for Alice to verify the Bob claims that the key belongs to uh, him and prevent the attack or any impersonators, the owner or um, the public key to be uh, uh, compromised in any way. So the uh, server digital certificates are often issued from a web server to the user client. It can ensure the authenticity of the web server and can ensure the authenticity of the cryptographic connection with the web server. So whatever information is appearing on the website, we can trust them that the information is 100% correct and it has not been altered by any ways. Now here they are uh, just trying to explain that uh, when a client sends hello and sends it to the web server, the web server would send a hello message back. It verifies the certificate and creates a pre-master secret. And then the client would exchange a pre-master secret with the web server where it would create um, a master secret session and uh, it would be copied on both. So there would be handshake between the web browser and the web server both would have the same key and uh, your communication or any uh, banking transaction which is taking place between the client and the web server would be secure. Uh, that's an example of a digital certificate. Uh, you can see in your browser that if this uh, lock is appearing with the address bar next to the uh, web address, it means that it's a secure connection and it's showing that the um, uh, certificate was issued to virus total and then issued by the certificate authority and that it, even it shows the validity of the certificate. Uh, if you want to see further details of it, you'll uh, uh, click on the issuer statement and you'll be able to get the details of it or click on the details and certificate path to uh, get the deep down details of the certificate. Now, digital certificates extended validation with SSL or uh, we call it uh, EVSSL as well. An enhanced type of a server certificate um, or a digital certificate requires more extensive verification. For example, browsers can visually indicate the user that they are connected to the website using the EVSSL. As I told you that on the address bar next to the web link, you'll see a lock appearing which verifies that the information on this uh, website or any communication like banking details etc has been verified and is protected. Uh, display in red if the site is known to be dangerous because uh, either the site is dangerous or the certificate is not digitally signed. In that case, it would show a red line. Now, privacy best practices is use encryption to protect the sensitive documents that contains the personal data. If you don't want your personal information uh, to be stolen on the internet, the, uh, the best way is to always encrypt the uh, documents. Use a strong password uh, in order to uh, uh, protect the document. It should be alphanumeric, special characters, uh, minimum uh, 8 to 10 characters. The longer it is, the better. Um, is it to protect your information, shared financial documents that contain personal information. Um, always shred the documents that have the financial details. Even if they are not required, they would have your name or the account number or the branch details or any information which can be used by the person who is actually um, looking for uh, that information. Do not carry a social security number in a wallet. Um, it is not difficult to memorize the social security number, so uh, you must have memorized it rather than keeping the number somewhere saved in your wallet. Do not provide personal information over the phone unless and until you know the person and you can verify the number. 
Uh, and, um, because uh, we we talked about earlier in this uh, course that people would be calling and they would try to post that they belong to an XYZ company and they are not the uh, the actual persons who are calling from there. We receive lots of calls uh, from the people who claim that they are calling from a bank. But if you will see the number is either a personal mobile number or a private landline number and uh, uh, you cannot provide that information, your personal information over the telephone. Um, the bank would never call you asking for your credit card details and personal details. They have all the information related to you um, available on their databases. Uh, keep personal information in a secure location which cannot be stolen easily. Be cautious about what information is posted on the social networking site. So you know, must not be sharing your banking details or IBAN number um, or your social security number or username or passwords over the social media. Though they say that our communication is secure, but uh, um, it's not a good practice to share all that information on the internet. Keep only the last three months and the most recent financial statements with you um, available at home, which are printed or in the digital format, make sure they are password protected and no other person have access to that. Install anti-spyware software on the computer, making sure that no one is stealing your information using those spyware software. Um, you must also have a pop-up blocker because uh, in certain websites, there are lots of pop-up blockers which are actually showing the advertisements which are um, quite interesting if you are inclined towards clicking those advertisements and you end up um, infecting your computer with malwares. Control cookies through the web browsers. Uh, so you are not allowing the third party cookies which are actually meant to collect your information from, uh, from the computer. Review the privacy options of the browser. Turn on the features that will provide the highest level of privacy without negative impact. Um, uh, negatively impacting the browser so you can find the best practices or the best settings, uh, security settings or privacy settings of the browsers um, on the internet. Usually the browsers are configured for the secure communications but still if you want to have a very secure communication it's highly recommended to review the settings uh, of the browser itself. Turn on Wi-Fi protected key like uh, WPA2 and uh, Wi-Fi networks. Be cautious about granting permissions to a website or application request that can collect the data. It mostly happens on the computer whenever there is a message uh, asking you or informing you that it's trying to gain access to certain things. We just press allow or uh, uh, permit without even reading those uh, details which are appearing on the screen. It's a very bad practice. We must always read the information or the data which that application or website is trying to gain access on your mobile phone or on the computer. Be sure a padlock or uh, the password protected uh, mobile phones or screens are there or the passwords are there on the computer as well. Uh, on the beginning of the web address and as for the credit card numbers or other personal information. So uh, it should not be open that uh, the information which you entered is stored and saved on the servers uh, where anyone can gain access to your credit card details, etc. And then use your common sense uh, and uh, don't just uh, uh, disclose your personal information on the internet. These are the responsibilities of the organizations. And that brings us to the end of the chapter and end of the book on uh, information security. And we were covering a book called uh, Security Awareness and Applying uh, Practical Security in Your World. So that was the title of the book. And I hope you enjoyed the course uh, on Introduction to Information Security. And I hope to see you in a different course soon. Thank you so much.